Hi, I'm Nancy from Metal, and this is part three of our 3D Pixel Storm tutorial series. We're going to look at the deformation features found in Shapeshifter AE, then we're going to move on and put the finishing touches on our logo animation. Let's begin. We'll begin by going over the deformation features found in Shapeshifter AE. To help us do this, we've created a square with a four color gradient and numbers. This will make it easier to follow the shape through different deformations. We've also created this displacement layer with squares. Now let's move on to our next step. In our master comp, we have two pre-comps, one we named SSAE Guide. This consists of the gradient and numbers. The second pre-comp is named Square Displace. We'll use this as our displacement layer. We don't need to show that layer right now, so we've turned the eyeball icon off. We also have a series of lights, all parallels. We'll go ahead and apply Shapeshifter AE. We select the SSAE layer, go to Effects, Metal, Shapeshifter. By default it will extrude it. Let's take a look at that by going into Custom View 1. There you go. What we'll do is go ahead and open up the generator and create three instances. Then we'll distribute them equally from center. It will be easier that way to follow. We'll offset it by 400 pixels. Now we need to go in and assign the displacement map. The alpha channel in that pre-comp will clip certain regions, resulting in our 3D shape. Each instance is now made up of nine smaller squares. We can set the displacement height to 5, and an extrusion of, say, 60, or maybe even more than that, 100. There. Now we have our shape set up, a cube made of cubes. Cool? Great. We'll close some of these controls. We don't need to see them right now. We'll go into Deformations. There are three types, Bend, Bulge, and Twist. Click on the checkbox next to Display Region. This represents the deformation zone. You'll see the default zone is 2000 by 2000 by 1000 pixels. This covers a 1080p resolution. We'll start with Twist and set an amplitude of 50. Amplitude is the strength of the deformation. This is your result. To speed things up, I've pre-keyed some keyframes and I've animated the size of the deformation box. X, Y, Z, over 3 seconds. So at 0 you can see we have 2000 by 2000 by 1000. And at 3 seconds we've doubled it to 4000 by 4000 by 2000. If I scrub through, you can see how our shapes are affected. The size of the deformation region affects the geometry. That's one way to animate deformations. So size of the region can animate. Another way is to move the position of the region. I've gone ahead and removed all the keyframes from our previous animation. I've also gone ahead and pre-rendered and set some keyframes for exposition of the display region. So at zero, I have it at its default state. Then at one second, I offset it to minus 1500 pixels. And then at three seconds, I offset it at plus 1500 pixels. Now you can see that just by animating the display region, you get some interesting results. And this is just animating one axis. Looks good? I think so too. I've removed all the keyframes from the last sequence, and I'm going to look at the bend deformation. We'll set an amplitude of 50. Another way to animate our deformation is by using positions in 3D transforms. Our shape will travel through the deformation box. At zero, we have a zero setting. At 1 second, we set it to minus 1500. At 3 seconds, we set it to plus 1500, very similar to our previous example. If we scrub through, we see how our bend is being affected as it travels through the area of the box. I like that. Let's look at another way to animate. We'll go back to Twist and set an amplitude of 100. In this case, we're going to use Rotation Y to animate. At the zero point in the timeline, we've got zero. Then at the three second mark, we have a full 360 degree rotation. So it's one full revolution. If I scrub through here and play it back, you'll see the animation. It's rotating the geometry within that region with an amplitude of 100. That's another way to animate. That's a good example of twist. Let's add another variant to that. We'll rotate X. We'll add minus 360 degrees at zero. We'll set it back to zero at the three second mark. Let's scrub through this and see what we've got. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we add some music? All right.
formation. That was fun. Now let's try another way of animating. We'll use some of the things we've learned so far. We'll set a region of 4000 by 4000 by 4000. We'll just zoom out a bit so that we can see the whole area better. We'll do something to demonstrate the influence of the deformation lattice. We'll offset the instances by using an offset of 2000 in instance offset Z. So you see how the instances are affected differently depending on where they are in the deformation zone. Next, if we go into our 3D transforms and start to rotate the original geometry on X, you can see how this yields some interesting and different results as well. Try combining the different features and you can start to see how the permutations are endless. That concludes our feature overview of the deformation tool in Shapeshifter AE. Now we can move on to the actual 3D pixel storm animation. Is that a good idea? All right then, let's review what we created in parts one and two of this tutorial. Let's look at a RAM preview of what we have so far. Although the animation looks pretty cool as is, we thought we could improve it with a subtle but effective use of deformation. As I just said, we thought it looked pretty good, but we wanted to add a more dramatic finish to the movement. At three seconds in the timeline, we set the amplitude to zero. We go to the end of the timeline and set the amplitude to minus 100. There. Select the keyframes, do an easy ease. Let's do a RAM preview. You can see that our deformation is very subtle. You have to look closely to see the difference. In this case, the best way to see what effect the deformation actually has is to view the before and after side by side. On the left is the render without the deformation. On the right is the render with the deformation applied. You'll notice that the end of the sequence on the right has a nice sweeping motion at the end. The shapes travel towards the camera in a fluid motion. That's the result of adding the deformation. Let's take a look again. Up until the three or four second mark, the renders are the same. It's only here that the deformation begins to apply. You'll see that on the right, this sweeping motion looks more dynamic. Notice that the sequence on the left is kind of anticlimactic at the end. Now would be a good time to show you the original sequence upon which this tutorial is based. We had many requests at Metal asking how the Chanel sequence was done. Now that you've gone through this tutorial, you can see that this was done entirely in After Effects with Shapeshifter AE. We used a combination of the features, including displacement mapping, using the generator to create instances and offset them, the 3D pixel storm feature, and deformation. You can see that the surface has a beautiful luster. We'll go ahead now and show you how to get this type of finish. The recipe starts with a glow, and you can see that it's the default setting. That's under Effect, Stylize, Glow. There you have it. That feature ships with AE. The next thing we did is add a vector blur. That's Psychor Effects. That comes bundled with AE as well. That's under Effects, Blur and Sharpen, CC Vector Blur. We set it to an amount of 30 with a ridge smoothness of 3 and a map softness of 20. If we reset it, you'll see that it's not that far from the default setting. It's really up to your personal taste as far as final adjustments. Then the last thing we added is another piece of software that's called Magic Bullet. Here are the settings that we used. We've got a vignette, we've got the edge softness going, black and white, the warm and cool leads towards the cool side. Here's a bit of contrast and auto shoulder. Let's take a look at a frame of our pixel storm sequence before and after the finishing touches. Looks good. So that concludes our pixel storm tutorial series. I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll see you soon.